Hey, what's up guys? If you're watching this video, you probably just got Voodoo and want to know how to set it up, or maybe you already have Voodoo and have had it for a long time and want to know how to do some specific things. So I'm going to go through and just share all my knowledge with you I know about Voodoo to try and help you guys out. So let's just get started, huh? Um, type in slash VD space OPT and you'll go ahead and open up Voodoo. There's lots of ways to open it up, but that's the fastest way, so that's how I do it. Um, here you have your profiles on the tools section is where it's going to start you at. Um, so all of these profiles are just different save settings you have for different characters or different things, maybe old profiles. That's what all these are. So all of these settings are a little bit different. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and make a new profile. So let's just start completely blank. So uh, this new profile, let's just call it Voodoo Video. Actually, let's call it um, 12345. That's super easy, right? So I type in new profile name, 12345. I hit save. There you go. Now I'm on this new profile, 12345. There it is. You can see that I tried making this video earlier, and then when I went to upload it, it got corrupted. So I'm on round two, and I'll try and make it a little bit shorter than before. So now I'm on this new profile, 12345. So uh, the first thing you're going to want to do when you make a new profile is go to move, and you're going to want to see what panels you have selected. You can see here that I have pets, I have panel one, and I have panel two, which is labeled main tanks. So um, for the sake of this video, let's just get rid of these. Let's hit remove here, let's hit remove here, let's remove this, let's remove that, let's remove that. So now we don't have any panels. Yeah, all our panels are gone. So I want to add a new panel, because right now if I click 40 man raid and try and show a test example, nothing's showing up here, because I just deleted everything. So let's add a new panel. There we go, there's panel 1. I just added it. Let's hit green. Now I'm adding up the panel, I can choose what I want it to be. By default, it's going to show me my groups. So I have this on group. It's going to show me group 1 group 2, group 3, group 4, whatever you want, or your own group. Class, it's going to show every class. And if I go to special, there's a lot of different options. Main tanks, pets are ones that you might use a lot, but there's some good options in here. Um, so let's just keep this on default. Just keep it on a group. Um, hit OK. Hit OK. So there you go. There's my group. There's my panel, group 1. Yeah. I can add as many panels as I want. I can add a second panel here, and I can make this just main tanks. I've got a special. It's already set to main tanks. I can hit OK. Now it's just going to show me main tanks here. I don't have any main tanks because I'm solo, and I'm a healer, so there's no main tanks in my group. But just for the sake of the video, let's try and change my... Uh, actually, I can't do that. All right. So you can have as many panels as you want. I could make a panel for pets, too. Make a new panel. Hit choose. I don't know why it's so small, but hit special. Go down here. Find pets, hit OK, and now I have a pet panel too. So if I'm in a raid, based on these positions, I could have my pets showing here, all the pets in the raid, sorry, I could have all the main tanks in the raid showing here, and then the rest of the group shown here. So if I now show in test as 40 men, it's going to show me the pets, it's going to show me the main tanks, it's going to show me the, um, the group I made. And because this is only set to group 1, it's only showing me group 1. So if I want to make group 2, group 3, group 4, in group 5, I have to hit this plus button over here to add more to this panel. And then I would make this group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, group 5. It defaults like that, yeah. So now if I do the test frame, it's going to show me a nice 25-man raid. Even though it's set to 40, there's only 25-man raids in Classic Wrath. So it's showing me 25 people here. It's showing me my main tanks up here. And I can put my pets right here. And boom, there you go. So now I can see all the people in the raid, all the pets, all the main tanks. So that's how you make new panels. You can make as many panels as you want. You can make 50 fucking panels, and you can have all sorts of crazy stuff showing. All right. So if you want to view the th what you're doing, you just hit this and left-click this test button and hold it down. And then I can click back here on general. It'll bring me back to the front, and it'll show me um, all of the things that I'm messing with. Right? So let's just start here in the basics with panels. Uh, panels is self-explanatory. It's how you m change how your raid frames look, their width, their height, the size of the text, what the text is showing, all of that. So you can see here panel 1 is blinking in yellow. The reason it's blinking in yellow is because I have this panel selected. So if I go to sizing and I want to make this panel scale a lot smaller, scale changes the entire panel while keeping all the dimensions the same. So let's say I make this sca panel scale 0.5. Well, it only changed this one. It didn't change panel 2 and panel 3. And the reason for that is because when you have panel 1 selected, blinking yellow, and you can see up here as well, it says panel 1, it's only changing panel 1. If I want to apply these same changes to all the panels I have, then I'd have to click Apply All. And then there you go. It applied it to all of them. So now I can make this panel normal size again. 
I can hit apply all, it'll change it back to all of the other panels I have. So if you just want to make one panel smaller than the rest, for example, I could do that. I could make this one really small, leave these all the same size, just hit OK, and then I have it. But if I want to do something to every panel, I have to click Apply All. And you should, just as a best practice, when you make changes to any panel in any of these side tabs, right, you should hit Apply All after if you want it to be on all of your panels. That way you save your progress, or you save the things that you've done to all of your panels. You don't have to go back and do it again. That would be really frustrating, and I've done that myself many times. So let's just start at the basics. General. Leave this ungrouped. Max columns, max rows. How many columns of RAID members do you want? How many rows do you want? 5 and 5 equals 25. Most people just use a box. That makes a lot of sense to me. Hide empty. Hide empty means if I don't have this on hide empty and I have headers, it will show the... Let me turn the headers on. It will show the empty groups that nobody's in even though I don't ha I'm not in a RAID or a party. It'll show them anyway. I keep hide empty on because I don't want to see that when I'm just solo. I don't want to see all those extra people, right? So I keep hide empty on. Um, you first means you're always going to go to the top, so you'll always be first in the group. Horizontal just changes if it's if it grows horizontally or it grows vertically, right? Bottom, same thing. Do you want it to be on the bottom or do you want it to be on the top? If I have horizontal and bottom, it's going to make it go to the right. But if I don't have horizontal and bottom, it'll make it go to the bottom. Um, sort by unit ID, leave that on. Anchor, this one's actually a pretty important one. So, let's say, and just as a best practice for playing the game in general, you usually want to have your frames closer to the center of your screen, so that way when you're going to heal, you're not looking off to the complete side of your screen and then not seeing that you're standing in bad, right? So, that can be annoying when you're playing solo, because if you have your panels anchored, I already have mine fixed here, but just for example, it'll start default, it'll be anchored to the top left. If you have your panels anchored, anchored to the top left, then your group one is going to be all the way over here when you're solo. But if you just change the anchor to the top right, then your group one is going to be here, and instead of starting on the left and growing to the right as more people fill your group, it'll start here on the right and grow to the left as more people fill your group. So what that's going to do is make it so that you don't have to look all the way to the side whenever you're doing 5-man or 10-mans, which makes it a lot nicer, I think. Um, so you just want to change the anchor to do that, guys just so you remember. Right here, change the anchor to the right. If you're someone who plays with your healing frames on your right side, then you'd probably be good to just leave it anchored to the left. Um, edge size, I don't worry about that. Sizing, uh, this one is really simple. It's just how you want to change the size of your frames. Um, panel scale, like I said earlier, it changes the entire scale while keeping the dimensions the same for everything you already changed. It just makes the entire thing bigger or smaller. Bar width, that just makes the bars less wide or more wide. Same with height. Y gap, X gap, that's the gap between each actual player inside the square. So if I make the X gap huge, it's going to start making this gap way bigger, right? Um, X spacing, it changes the uh, spacing between each column, and Y spacing would be between each row. Um, oh man, these frames are going to look terrible by the time we're done messing around here. But anyway, let's just leave it here on this like nice little square so we have set up. Um, and then for sake of the video, I'll take this pet panel, and I'll take this main tank panel, and I'll just move them out of the way. So here's the frames we have. Let's say I really like this square, okay? So let's move on to the next thing, bars. What bar texture do I want? Do I like the blizzard default, where it's kind of like shiny? Um, there's a lot of here. Just pick one you like, guys. It's really that simple. I personally, I like sticking with like smooth or minimalist or something, something basic. Um, and you can also change the textures by just scrolling here and going through all the options. Um, mana bar height, how big are, and this is power bar height really, because this applies to rage, this applies to energy, mana, runic power, whatever. How big do you want this to be? Uh, I personally like having mine like tiny and thin, but do it however you like. Um, custom health bar, don't worry about that. Uh, bar color, this is class color. It'll color the people in your raid or group by the class they are. So if they're a mage, they're light blue. If they're a pally, they're pink. If you have it on gradient, it's going to color their health based on how healthy they are. Where if they're full health, they're very bright green, and if they're about to die, they're red, and everything in between, orange, yellow. Um, solid just makes it whatever color you designate in the colors tab, if you just want everyone to be one color all the time. 99% of people, I would say, use class color. Uh, miscellaneous damage flash. Just leave this on. If it's not on, turn it on. At least the sensitivity, 0.75 is good. What this does, and I'll show you an example real quick. 
when somebody takes a lot of damage at once, it's going to make their frame flash. So you can see I fall from the sky, I take a lot of damage, boom, there's a little flash. That flash is surprisingly attention grabbing. Um, and is very helpful if you someone takes a lot of damage out of nowhere, a big spike, and you need to heal them up quick. So just leave that on, and uh, whatever, I mean, do whatever you want, but I prefer having it on. Headers is the header of the panel. So that would be this here, group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, group, four, group 5, main tanks, pets. Do you want a header for your panel? If you don't, you can just turn it off. Okay, there's no header there anymore. If you have the header on, you can change the texture of the header background. You can change the spacing, how big the header is. You can change um, how wide the header is. You can change the text of the header, the font, the, the colors. You can change all of that. Targets, you can show your uh, each raid member's target to the right or left, wherever you want, um, by uh, clicking targets here. And you would change it by clicking left or right here. I don't use targets, but you can if you want. Target of target is similar. It shows your target's target. Um, tool tips. You can have a Voodoo tooltip that only loads when you're hovering over people in Voodoo. That would be what this is down here in the bottom right. Um, you can have it on standard so that it always shows where Blizzard default tooltips load in. Mouse so that it always shows in your mouse. Or custom, which lets you put it wherever you want. And let's say I put it up here, um, and then now I hover over someone. Now it's going to show that tooltip with some interesting information. I like having it on, and personally I just keep it in like an empty space on my screen. But you don't have to use this. You can turn it off if you want. You can make it so it doesn't show in the fight, or it does show in the fight by checking this. Um, debuffs, you can make it so it shows spell info and debuffs in this tooltip if you want. And you can change the scale, how big it is, with the scale slider here. Text, this is one that you guys are probably going to mess with a lot. This is going to change the position of the text on your um, voodoo frames. So if I want the text to be dead center, then I would just click the center one here, and now it's dead center. If I want it to be on the top, I click the top. The left outside the frame, I click the left outside the frame. So let's just put it in the dead center. But let's say like you want it a little below dead center, but this one is too far down, right? So that's what these X and Y axis sliders are, yeah? So if I have these set to 0, 0, which means that there's no X and Y axis change. It's just perfectly dead center right now. Let's say I want it to be a little bit lower. So I can grab this X, sorry, this Y axis slider, and I can just make it a little bit lower, and that might get me between the two that I want. And I can do the same thing with the X axis. If you're having problems with uh, setting up positioning the way you want clicking on these, you might want to check your X and Y axis sliders. Make sure that they're zeroed out so that you're not getting any weird uh, interaction between that but that's how you can make micro adjustments if you want to do that uh, over here in bar text do you want to show players names in the class color as well well you can do that by clicking here and it'll make them the class color um, mono you can click that to do this font <laughs> atrocity I don't know why you would do that but it's an option shadow adds a shadow to the names to the name text in the, the font text sorry and outline makes an outline on the text um, health color, you can check that and it will change the names to be um, similar to the health colors, uh, like the gradient we were showing earlier. Name size text, this is how big their players' names are. Life size text, this is how big their life size text is, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, and then you can change the font here for all of those things. Um, let's just do uh, Oswald, I like that font, yeah? So, let's say I don't want um, to show health at all. I just want to see their names. Well, that's what this hit points section is. You can just uncheck hit points, and now I don't see their health. I just see their names. Or I can show their health. This here is showing where do I want the hit points to show in relation to the player's name. I, right now I have show hit point text below player name, but if I click up here to anchor it above, it'll show it above. Right, right, you get the point. Um, over here, how do I want their health to show as text? Do I want it to be a percentage like it is now, or would I rather see how much HP they have remaining? Or maybe I want to see just how much HP they're missing. Um, all these settings, you can do that. Highly relevant. You can make an irrelevance trigger, like if they're above 80%, just don't show at all, and then it won't show their health percent if they're above that number that you set. Um, and then total will show their total HP, and that goes with like missing. So this is how much health they're missing, and if I click show total, now it'll show me out of how much. Right? Um, over here, show name. Do you want to see their names at all, or do you just want blank bars? You can do that. Um, Details nickname. People like to go into their details nicknames and make stupid names. You can check this and it'll show their nickname on your Voodoo as well, so it matches. I personally have this off, so I actually know who I'm healing, but you can keep that on if you want. Class is uh, just shows the player's class on the frame. Uh, flags will show if they're AFK dead, but that's what this is here. Rip, uh, rip, AFK. If you don't want that to show, you can turn that off by unchecking flags. Um, pet owner. 
um, this will show the name of the pet owner in the frame. So if you look here at my panel three, I'm going to click on panel three so it's selected. Now it's flashing and you can see up here it says panel number three. You can see that on my pet frames, I don't have the name of the pet showing. I only have the pet owner showing. So instead of having the name of the pet on my frame, I can just see whose pet it is. I could have both the name of the pet and the owner of the pet if I check name. Or I could just have the name of the pet without the owner's name. I personally like to just keep it on the pet owner's name without the pet's name. That way, if it's someone I don't like in the raid, I know not to heal their pet. And then I laugh at them. Um, so that's I think that's it for text. Let's go to hot icons. This is another important one, guys. I'm going to reselect panel 1 by just clicking over here on panel 1. Now it's flashing, so I know I have it selected. So hot icons is an, is an important one. There are all sorts... Well, let me start from the top. This is going to show on your frames, your hots, and how you want them to appear on your frames. So if I heal myself, the rejuvenation, it's showing my rejuvenation here in the bottom right. And as that rejuvenation ticks down, it's going to soon show me a number there's the timer right there on my rejuvenation if i life bloom myself it's showing me the time left on that life bloom and if i add stacks it's going to add stacks in the top left there so all every spell you can cast you can make show on your frame for the most part there's only so much space obviously but you can have a lot of stuff showing if you really want to go into it so how do you configure that though well, you'd come over here to where it says own hots and now you have all of these different places you can show these hots these are all voodoo defaults you're going to want to click around on these and just hot yourself up and see if you like them. I like this one personally, so I leave it. But you can have these showing in lots of different places based on what you like. While this, is, um, this isn't as customizable as these other two options, but it is more user-friendly, I would say. If you... Also, you can change the size of this hot icons here on the size bar on the right. So let's say... I'm clicking on myself. Well, those hots are taking up a lot of space. So how about I just drag this bar and make them a little bit smaller? And okay, well, that's too small, but you get the point. I could change the size right there. So maybe like 25 would be better, right? So I'll make that like 20, 26, can't do 25. There we go. That's like a better size for that size frame. So that's how you would change the size of the actual icons themselves. So let's say that you want to get really into the customization here. Well, I can select one of these options here, this one or this one. I personally prefer the bottom one, but it's up to you. And what this will do is these two, these two selections here correspond to this box over here entitled Hot Order. So if I'm using this box here in number one and over here, number one is rejuvenation then this rejuvenation spell is going to pop up here in the top left so now you can see that i have this selected one is in the top left of this frame and one here is rejuvenation if i use rejuvenation it's going to be in the top left and it's way too small now because i changed the setting so let me make that bigger again now you can see rejuvenations in the top left you can see also that i have wild growth in slot two and where's slot two well that's in the top right so if i wild growth myself I wild growth myself there you go it's in the top right and that works the exact same way for this one it just changes where they are in order so I personally prefer to use this on my bars but this is a really good one if you want to set up uh, in order what things look like if you're using one of the voodoo defaults down here or up here sorry these hot orders still matter because they're still gonna populate depending on the order you have these in so you might want to have to you might want to move spells around depending on what you want where but that's how these work so you can select the spells that you want to show the to appear on the frames and then you would have them um where you want them on the frames and how they appear um they don't just have to be hots they can be buffs they can be debuffs there can be lots of different things but in this hot icons you're messing with hots only if you want to show buffs we could I'll show you how to do that later. But basically, this is how you put in hots you want to see, and this is where you um, change where those hots appear. Icons makes it so that the hots are showing the spell icon. Glossy would make it so instead of a hot icon, it would just be this like weird glossy thing, right? I don't like that. Flat, same thing. It, you can just make it so it's like triangles instead. Um, so like I have multiple triangles based on how many stacks they have. I don't know who uses that. I, maybe you like it, but I personally just leave it on icons. Stacks, 
if you don't want to see the number of, like for Life Bloom, for example, the spell can stack up to three times. If I don't want to see how many stacks it has, and I just want to see the timer, I could click this and turn stacks to off. I personally don't do that. I have to put text back on so that instead of triangles, it shows the actual uh, number of stacks. Excuse me, the number of stacks. So that's how that works. I wouldn't recommend turning off stacks, but that's up to you. I would just leave it on an icon and text personally. Hot bars. I don't use hot bars, but if you like them, you can go ahead and try them. What these are are basically bars that appear on your frames that will show you similar information to what hot icons does. So let's say I make slot one rejuvenation, and you can see that slot one, based on what I have selected here, will be on the very top of the frame. So now if I hit OK and I use that spell, you can see now I have this hot bar ticking down my life bloom as it ticks down over here. So I could use hot bars to keep track of my spells instead of hot icons. It's preference if you want to do that. So I could make regrowth on slot two. And then if I uh, if I regrowth myself, now I have that hot bar and then there's life bloom on top, both ticking down, right? And I can change how those look again by using these four options here. So I could have them grow from the bottom up instead. And then they would be going bottom up. I don't use hot bars, but if you guys want to give it a try, go for it. Um, and then orientation, that'll just mess with those settings. Miscellaneous. Um, right icon. This is your skull, X, triangle, circle, square. That's what right icon is. If you, and then anchor is where you have it anchored on your frame. So I have my right icons in the top right right now. So if I give myself a right icon, I'll give myself a skull. You can see there it is on the top right. Let's say I want to move it down to the left to make it a little bit smaller. So just like before, I have it anchored in the top right, but I want to move it down to the left to make it a little bit smaller. Well, I could move it down by clicking this middle right button, which would move it down a little bit. But instead, I'll just leave it anchored to the top right. Grab this Y-axis slider and just move it down a little bit, move it to the left a little bit, and then make the icon 0.1 smaller. And then if I hit OK, you can see that it did exactly what I said it was going to do. Move it down to the left, made it a little bit smaller. So that's how you use those X and Y-axis sliders to micro-adjust where you want your icons appearing based on where they are originally started, which is based on where you have it anchored. I know that was a mouthful. Hopefully that made, made sense to you guys. And then you can also make it so you never show skull, you never show triangle if you uncheck these, but I just have them all checked. Frame strata. Frame strata is where on the foreground, middle ground, or background of your screen is Voodoo going to set itself. So if you have Voodoo on very low, then Voodoo is going to be behind your Domino's bar. It's going to be behind your raid frame. It's going to be behind your chat. If you have frame strata on highest, then it's going to be in front of your chat like it is now. It's going to be in front of all of your other stuff, right? So that's what strata is. That's how it works for every add-on in the game. So mess with the strata based on what you want Voodoo to do uh, and where you want it to be. Usually I don't have Voodoo overlapping anything, so it's not a problem. But if you do have something that overlaps on Voodoo, maybe you want Voodoo to take precedence and be on top of that. Or maybe you don't. You want it to be behind. So if you want it to be behind, you would make the strata lower. If you want it to be on top, you'd make the strata higher. Um, overheal text. Overheal text basically is when you're healing someone and they're being overhealed, you can see that the frame lights up. It turns uh, a lot brighter. And let me get rid of this icon so you can actually see. You can see that there's a little 3.6k there. I'll be using a bigger overheal, so it's bigger. 7.6k. I know that's kind of hard to read, guys, but basically that's what overheal text does. The bigger the overheal, the brighter their plate will appear. So I'm using a huge overheal, so I'm basically turning white. And if I use the tiny overheal, I just turn a little white. And then the text will also get bigger and show me how much I'm overhealing them by in that green text. I personally don't like having the overheal text on, so what I do is I just click on here to change the overheal text color, which you can do by the way. You could make the overheal text yellow if you wanted, and now it turns yellow. But I personally don't like having the overheal text on, so I'll go here to change the overheal text color. I'll grab the opacity and I'll just put it on zero. And what's that going to do is it's just going to make the opacity zero, so now it's see-through. So even though it's still technically there, it's invisible to our eye. So now that overheal text is gone. You can leave that on if you guys like it, and then these are the settings to change the anchor, the Y and X axis, and how, how big or small that text size is, if you guys like that. I don't like it personally, but it's up to you. Okay, we got through panels, so let's go to colors. Colors is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Poison, disease, curse, a magic effect, or a custom debuff effect on any of your raid members is going to change the color of their frame based on what kind of debuff they have. So you can see here with the, with the randomly generated and fake raid members in my group, you can see here that Mystic Smell is poisoned. You can see that Tom Bar Tomb Baron is cursed. And um, I think that's it for now. But let's say I wanted to make people who are poisoned appear as yellow instead. And I wanted the text for the poisoned people to be uh, 
to be red, like McDonald's style. So now you can see that these two people are poisoned because they just changed the colors I made. And let's say I like disease, and I want disease to be purple along with curses, and I want the text to be green. Well, there you go. Now this guy's diseased, his background's purple, his text is green. I leave these on default, poison's green, like basically in every single game ever, so I just leave poison as greens. I usually leave all these on default, but you can change these colors if you like. Charmed over here, this is if someone's mind controlled or or charmed in some way. It'll change the it'll change just like these change the colors. Um, offline, if they're offline, dead if they're dead. Don't worry about clusters or miscellaneous. That's not something you have to that you can do in Wrath Classic. Modes. Um, on here, this is just changes. Um, so you saw earlier, maybe I'll show you again real quick. If I take damage and I go to heal myself, you can see my frame turns green based on how much I'm healing myself, right? And let's take a little more damage so you can see. If I use a heal that's not going to top me up all the way, it'll show you I'm only going to heal myself about that much. But if I use a heal that's going to top me up all the way, it'll heal me that much. And you can see that my health percentage changes based on how overhealed I'm going to be. So this heal would bring me to 102% HP, and this heal would only bring me to 79. So the color of this incoming heal, this incoming heal indicator, you, that's what you change right there in that mode setting. So this un incoming heal indicator, let's say I didn't like it being green, I wanted it to be yellow. Well now when I do an incoming heal on myself, it's going to be yellow instead of green. That's exactly what that does, guys. And irrelevant shield bar, over shield bar, that's all the same thing. A shield bar would be a discrease powered shield, or an over shield bar would be a powered shield. That's overhealing them. I leave all these on default. The only thing I did with incoming is I made it light green, and I made it a little bit brighter so it was easier to see on my eye. I think by default it's a little too dark for me. Um, powers, this just changes the color of the power for the class you're using. So rogues use energy, um, mages, casters use mana. So let's say I wanted mana to be yellow instead. Well now all of the mages mana is yellow and I wanted rogues energy to be blue. Well now the rogues energy is blue. That's what that does. Hots, hots too. I don't know enough about this to go into detail. Classes, this changes the color of the classes. So warriors are brown, rogues are yellow, I could make warriors blue if I wanted. I'm not going to do that, but that's what that is. Um, right icon, same thing as we were messing with before, just don't worry about this. Target unit, I don't mess with that either. Okay, well we're through colors now, so let's go back to general and let's start with the entire settings. So general is going to change the settings for pretty much all of the panels you have. Um, unlike panels, and unlike in the panel section where you could select a specific panel, um, by the way, guys, if you're ever having trouble bringing up these um, example panels, you can click here on Move, set this to 40, click Test a couple times, or just click on Move and then click General again, and it should repopulate those panels for you so that you can see what you're doing. So again, you just click on Move, then you hit General. So unlike in panels where we are making a change for a specific panel, and then I'd have to hit Apply All to apply them to everything, so I could change a panel individually or change them all by applying all. In general, this is pretty much changing settings for all your panels all the time. So that's why there is no apply all button, because this changes for everything. So let's go through these general options real quick. Operation mode, leave this on neutral. Filter, main tanks. Let's say I have a panel that I don't want to show main tanks on. Well, if I check this, then it won't show main tanks um, anymore. So I could uncheck that so that in my default panel, which shows all 25 of my raid members, it's not going to show main tanks, but in my specific panel, just for main tanks, it still will. So if I don't want to see the tanks up here and in my main raid frame again, then I could check this so they're only showing in one place. That's the same for five-man main tanks, same for private tanks, and same for assists. Own group means you won't show your own group in your 25-man raid frames. So in these 25-man frames here, if I check own group, then let's say I was in group 5, group 5 wouldn't be there, it would just be groups 1 through 4. And then if I made a second panel, a separate panel that shows my own group, I could have my own group somewhere else. Um, self makes it so that I'll never appear in my default uh, group frames. Um, focus unit and target unit, then I'll make it so that focus units or target units never appear in those default group frames. Lock panels, enable this so I keep this enabled, so what this does is make it so you can't drag your panels around unless you open the voodoo options. Um, I don't want to be healing someone and accidentally left click and then drag my frame out of the way. I want it to be locked. You can make it so it's only locked in combat, and you can make it no clicks, which would basically make the panels information only and you can't interact with them. Maybe you only wanted to use your raid frames to display information, but you don't actually want to use them to heal or to click on people or target anyone, then you can make it no clicks. Um, or click throughable. That's basically the same thing. Um, hide panels. 
hide panels while empty means that if there's nobody to fill up group two, group three, group four, group five, because let's just say I'm solo, I'm not in a group, that it then it's not going to show group two, two, group three, group four, group five. Or let's say that I have like a, a uh, 15 people, so I have groups 1, 2, and 3, then it won't load group 4 and group 5. It won't show empty panels. If you uncheck this, it's going to show those empty panels no matter what. I think I showed that earlier, but just in case I didn't, there you go. Um, I have to enable the headers to make it so you can actually see that. Um, so there you go. I don't have anybody, so it's not showing the empty, but it would show it would hide those if there's nobody there. Um, parties. Uh, hide panels when you're in a party of up to 5 hide panels when you're by yourself. So let's just say you're by yourself, like solo questing, you don't care about having Voodoo up, you can check solo and then it's just gonna disappear. It's not gonna show at all when you're by yourself. I uncheck that, I like having it up all the time, but you can hide it when you're solo. Pet battle, that's retail. Empty buttons, it's not gonna show uh, non-existent units. Scanners, almost none of this matters. The only thing that really matters is the default is 40 yards. And if you're a healer, you want to put the spell that you use the most often in here, have that be by spell. That way, when you're looking at players, you can see uh, on this frame right here, Necropope and Secret Sword, they're both out of range of my rejuvenation because I have this set by spell and I have the spell that the Voodoo is getting its range from as rejuvenation. Because my rejuvenation is a 40 yard range, anybody outside of that 40 yard range is showing as a little um, transparent here. So I know that they're not in range of my rejuve, and everyone else who's in range is showing up clearly. So if I made this a uh, spell that's only 20 yards, then these people, uh, a lot more of these people would probably become transparent, right? Um, so by default, you can leave this on 40 yards. 40 yards is usually typical of like who's in your range. But if there's a spell that you use all the time that's maybe 30 yard range, I think Chain Heal might be one. You might want to set this to be Chain Heal so that anyone out of the range of Chain Heal will be obvious on your on your frames. Um, don't worry about if units out of range, this doesn't work on classic. Scale, don't worry about that. Talent trees, uh, I would leave this on. What this does is try to auto set roles for people, whether they're tanks, healers, or DPS. Combat log, this just enables uh, auto logging for Warcraft logs. Uh, lots of add-ons do that, but you can just leave it on by default. Refresh scanner, what this does is it, um, how how fast are your hot is your hot information on the frames being updated? Uh, I don't, you can make it lower the faster your internet and computer is. I just leave it on default. Threat slash incoming. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier with incoming heals. I showed you guys incoming heals on the frame when you're healing yourself. You see that green or whatever color you want bar that shows how much you're about to be healed. Um, you can make it so you can or can't see your own incoming heals. You can make it so that text that same uh, overheal text I showed you earlier how to make it transparent well you can just turn it off here so I learned something new too I could have just unchecked it here if I didn't want to see that anymore but both options work others let's say I don't want to see anybody el uh, any other healers incoming heals I only want to see my own incoming heals so I could check or uncheck that and then overheal same thing do you want that panel to get brighter when someone's being overhealed or would you rather not change colors at all uh, shield bar, this is just for power shield basically. I would just leave this on by default. Uh, check for aggro, this is tanking stuff. I don't worry about that. AoE advice, none of this matters for wrath. Miscellaneous. Um, auto announce resurrection, you can turn this on, uh, type in the resurrection spell that you use, and then you can, um, oh sorry, you would turn this on and then you would type in like uh, something you want to say every time you res someone, and it'll auto say it. Um, Custom add-ons. I have mask. I don't use click. I maybe you need to turn these on to make click work. But if you're using Voodoo, I don't know why you'd use click anyway. Um, mask I use with no problems without having this checked. So I personally don't have it checked. But maybe mess with these if you use those other add-ons. Um, uh, ready check will show ready check icons on the frames. I leave that on. DC shield. I just leave that on uh, anyway because why not? A global cooldown and cast a mouse up. Cast a mouse up means instead of casting when you left when you hit the mouse down on somebody, it'll cast it when you let go of it. I never use that. I hate that. Um, indicators. I'll go into more of that later. Cluster spell trace and bouquets. I'll go into more of that later. Um, so let's get into spells, which is the bread and butter of voodoo. So you want to use voodoo to heal. Or even if you're not a healer, like let's say you're a uh, let's say you're a feral druid and you want to just be able to be res someone by left clicking on them on voodoo, or you're a uh, you're a priest and you want to, or you're yeah you're a shadow priest you want to fort someone just by left clicking on them right? You can set up any spell in the game, any spell by just typing it in and then binding it to whatever you want it to be. So if I want my left click with zero modifier key being pressed right 
to be abolish poison, then I would just type in here abolish poison. And whatever spell you type in, if you don't designate a rank, it's going to automatically use the highest rank. If I type parentheses here, rank 1, now it's going to go to use rank 1. I don't know if there's an abolish poison rank 1, but this works for every single spell, so just bear with me. If I don't have a specific rank typed in just like that, it's automatically going to default to the highest rank. So here, modifier key, control, alt, and shift. Control means if I'm left clicking my mouse key, I'm hitting my left mouse button, and with control held down, what's it going to cast? This none means there's no modifier being, key being held. So what's going to happen when I just left click? What's going to happen if I only hold down alt and left click? What about if I only hold down shift and left click? And then what if I hit alt, control, and left click? Or alt and shift and left click? Or alt, control, and shift and left click? So that's what this is for. This is the no modifier keys being held down. You're just using your mouse by itself. And then this is the control being held down section, the shift being held down section, and the alt being held down section. So if I come here to modifier key, and let's say I want to make my left button do wild growth. And it's going to do the max rank wild growth by default. I have no modifier key being held. So if I just left click my character, it should wild growth me. So I come over here, I left click myself, boom, it wild growth me. And that would work for anybody in my raid who's in range. So I can just left click anyone I want and it's going to wild growth them. And you can set that up to be any spell you want. So I could have left growth be regrowth. I could, sorry, I could have left click be regrowth. And then I could make my right button rejuve. So I can come over here, I right click myself, and it rejuves me. I left click myself, and it wild grows me. It's so much faster than clicking on a target and then pressing the button to heal them. And much more efficient, too. So that's how you set it up with mouse buttons. You can make it so you can control click someone, alt click someone, shift click someone, or just click them to do whatever you want. And you can use left button, right, ma right mouse button, middle mouse button, or if you have extra buttons on your mouse, you can use all those too. You can even bind your mouse wheel. So you could do mouse wheel up or mouse wheel down to do something. Or you could control mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down, or alt mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down. Any combination of these is possible. You just type in the spell that you want. Um, let's say you wanted to just target someone by left clicking them, and you didn't want it to be a spell. Like, you just want to click on someone and target them. Well, then you would just type target right here. See how it changes from spell to command when I typed in target? So I type in target, and now, if I left click, it's just going to target me. It's not going to cast a spell anymore. If I come back here and I change target to drop down, that's another one. Now, when I left click myself, it's going to give me the drop down as if I right click them, right? So you can just make your left and right click target and drop down. And it's going to function as if it was just regular WoW Rage frames. And then if I control left click or control right click, I could make those do different things. So you can use target and drop down on any of these modifier keys. Any of these can be left can be target and drop down if you want it to be. I personally just use uh, I use a separate button to target and drop down with Voodoo, but you can do whatever you want. Um, there's also menu, which let's just make this left click for now. Uh, menu is another command, and you can see these um, commands here, target, focus, assist, menu, tell, drop down. That's what all of these commands are. Um, so if I made it focus and I left click them, it would be they would become my focus target. If I made it tell and I left click them, it would try, try to whisper them. So now that I made my left click menu, if I click this, it brings up this voodoo menu that lets me change people's roles uh, in case they're not changing their roles themselves and I want them to show up in my main tank panel and I ask them to change themselves to main tank and they refuse to, well, I can just change it myself by bringing up this voodoo menu and all this other stuff. I can promote them to raid leader or master leader, right? So... That's what that does. Keys local. Let's go into keys local now. Let's say you don't like clicking with your mouse and you want to press the keys on your keyboard. Keys local does the exact same thing as this mouse section, except you'd be typing in the spell and you'd be selecting the key that you want to use. So I have regrowth typed in here. So I would type in, let's make a new one just for example, regrowth. There you go, just like that. It's going to default to the highest rank. If I wanted to use regrowth rank one, I would type in regrowth rank one, just like that, right? But I just want to use the highest rank of regrowth. So I type in regrowth, and then I would bind this to a key. I already have this bound to G, but let's just say I bound it to G again right here, okay? So there's regrowth bound to G. So now if I hover over my character and I press G, it's going to regrowth me. So just like before with the mouse clicks, now it's just using keybinds to do it instead. You can do that for any key you want. You can see I have the target command here on F8. F8 is one of my mouse buttons I bound. So if I want to target someone, I can just click my little mouse button to target them. And it targets. See, I'm targeting myself by clicking my mouse button, which is F8. So keys local works the same way as mouse guys. And you can put any spell you want in here. Um, like this, 
even on DPS, just just a personal note real quick out of the tutorial, I use this to misdirect people on my hunter. I use this on my DK to to um, to bring them back as a ghoul, whatever their rebirth is. Like you can use this to unholy frenzy people as unholy DK. It's it's so much easier and faster than typing in uh, making a new macro and typing in the person's name you want to use it on and then changing that macro every raid or clicking on them manually and pressing the button i can just make unholy frenzy for example on my control left click and i would do that i'll show you real quick just for the sake of example i could make my control left click so i come here to the control section and i would make left click unholy frenzy unholy frenzy right i'm not a dk but this is an example unholy frenzy right let's pretend i pressed okay and then i would come over here and if i want unholy frenzy someone i just control left click they're instantly unholy frenzied it's so fast and i can do it to anyone i want whoever i control left click so voodoo is a great add-on even if you're not a healer if you're a healer it's fucking amazing but even if you're a dps you might as well use it because it's showing debuffs it's showing buffs it lets you hotkey things to make it easier for yourself it lets you show incoming heals on people so you know who's going to die there's all sorts of information you're getting out of you of these over regular wild default for eight frames all right guys this video has been going on pretty long and we're already at 40 minutes so let's just power through the rest of this real quick um buffs and debuffs i think are the only sections we have left and then i'm going to go over bouquets very quickly which i'll do right at the very end so buffs um this is if you want to show buffs uh that you need to keep up on people so if you come here to config I'm a druid, so it's showing me the buffs that I have for the group. My buffs are Mark of the Wild and Thorns. This is also Gift of the Wild. So if I only wanted it to show when someone's missing Mark of the Wild but not Gift, I could select that. Or I could make it so it only shows when Gift is missing and not Mark. If you leave it on empty, it's just going to default to if either of them is missing, it's going to pop up. Thorns, if since uh, Thorns doesn't have uh, two s section stages to it, like Mark does, just one Thorns ability, if I click select down here, it's going to say, like, okay, well... Do you want thorns to show that it's missing on everyone? Or, and I don't. I don't care if DPS have thorns. The only people I want to have thorns are the tanks. Even myself, I don't have check because I don't care if I have thorns. I just want the tanks to have thorns. So I just checked all the tank groups so that no matter what, the tanks always are telling me or always showing up that they don't have thorns. And anyone else who doesn't have thorns, I don't want to appear. So what you can do is you can click here on general and you can hit enable and it's going to bring up this buff frame. I personally don't like using this buff frame. I don't think it looks very good. I don't like how it looks, but you can use it and it works fine. And what you would do is you just left click anywhere on this frame and it'll rebuff people. I don't like it, so I disable it. And what I do is I just use colors. So if you want to just do that like me, I'll show you how to do that real quick. So you would just have both of these things checked and then you click here where it says missing and it lets you change the color of the frame when they're missing that buff. So right now you can see that I'm pink. Well, the reason I'm pink is because I don't have Mark of the Wild, so I have it pink. And if I if I don't have thorns and I had this selected on self, it would also show me as green when I'm missing thorns. So you can change the color here that you want it to be when someone's missing the buff that you need them to have. Um, there's lots of ways to do this with lots of different add-ons. I personally just like doing it through Voodoo because it makes it easy. So anybody who's ever pink for me is missing Mark or Gift of the Wild. So if I close Voodoo and I give myself marker gift of the wild there you go now my frame's back to being a druid color instead of pink and if i let's just show you real quick if i added myself to the thorns debuff and i hit okay look now i turn green because i don't have thorns either so now if i give myself thorns boom it turns back to orange i'm going to take self back off there though because i don't care if i have thorns or not um again this is how you use the buff panel if you wanted to use that i personally don't like it colors um this is more of the same with the buff panel but this basically says like bar color is do you want the bars to change color like i had during combat i would recommend checking this on because you want to be able to rebuff people who just got b rezzed or maybe maybe the buff just fell off on a tank maybe your mark of the wild or fort just fell off a tank during the fight well you probably want to rebuff them <laughs> even during the fight so i have it checked to show during the fight and i have it checked so the bar changes color Rebuff, you can use this tab so that you can use your mouse wheel to auto-rebuff people. I personally don't do this. I don't know how to do that, really, and I don't want to mess with it. Okay, so now we're going to get into the last thing, guys, which is bouquets. This is a little more advanced, but let's say that you... You know what? Let's start from scratch. Let's go over here to your um, panels and go to hot icons. So let's say you have all these spells showing where you want them to show on your frame but you are missing a spell that you really want to see like let's say abolish poison right here wasn't here let's say when i abolish poison someone sorry let me set a button for abolish poison real quick so i'll make it none no modifier key just a regular left click for abolish poison so let's say when i abolish poison someone i want to see that this abolish poison buff right here is on voodoo i want to see who abolishes poison well you can add any single buff in the game to appear on your voodoo frames 
and then you can slot it in to appear on one of these sections here. So you can see how I've shown you guys earlier where you can pick all these hots. Well, I have all these empty slots here that I could put Abolish Poison here. Well, what if you open this up and there is no Abolish Poison, right? Like, hey, where's Abolish Poison? I thought you said I could add any buff I wanted. Well, sometimes you have to make the buff yourself. And the way that you make the buff yourself to be added into this hot order, or debuff, by the way, is by using bouquets. So if I click here on General and I come down to bouquets, you can see I made one earlier. I'll just make a new one. So come here, down to bouquets, and you would literally just type in here, enter new bouquet name. So I'll make this one, abolish Poozon, okay? And then I'll hit new. And there you go. Now I have this showed up here, and it's abolish poison. So all I would do now is come over here to this add button. I would click this green add button, and it would drop in this little thing over here. Now it's telling me, okay, well, what's this name of this buffer debuff? What is this supposed to be? Well, it's supposed to be abolish poison. So if I type in Abolish Poison here, that's all there is to it, guys. Now I have Abolish Poison as one of my selectable um, bouquets. Now I can load that in to my panels. Well, there's a couple more things you want to do before you mess with that. So the default icon is going to default to Glossy, which means basically when you see that icon up here in your frames, it's going to be this weird square-looking thing. You can choose any of these icons to make it any of these weird little things. But 99% of the time, I would recommend just clicking on none slash default. And you'll see that up here, instead of being that glossy square that it was defaulted to, now when you hit none default, it becomes the spell icon. So I would almost always change this to none default. Spell source, mine and others, do you want to see any abolish poisons on the target? Or do you only want to see your own abolish poisons? This works for any buff. So if you want to see everybody's fortitudes, everybody's Mark of the Wilds, keep others on. If you only want to see your own for whatever spell you're putting in here, then uncheck others and keep mine on. Or vice versa, you could uncheck mine and only show others. So now we've created Abolish Poison. That's literally it. We're done. We hit new. We named the name of the bouquet. We added here with this green button. And then we typed in the name of the buff that we wanted to show. So there's Abolish Poison now. And we have it called Abolish Poison. So let's go back to the panels here and find one of these empty slots. Well, slot 5, I want to be Abolish Poozin. So where is that? Oh, I come down here, I see there it is right there. Abolish Poozin. And you can see there's a little there's a little bracket B showing that Abolish Poozin is a buff. So I click here, Abolish Poozin. Abolish Poozin is now going to be in slot 5. And if I close Voodoo and Abolish Poozin myself, now it's showing in slot 5, Abolish Poozin. And the reason Abolish Poison is off the screen there is because I don't, I haven't set up these these hot icons to be the right size and scale to fit in my frames. So if I wanted to make that look better, I would either have to make these frames wider, or I would have to make the icons smaller, or maybe I would have to put them to to appear in a different spot. So it's going to take a little messing around to like make things the way that you want, guys. But that's how you make a custom buff up here, and it doesn't just have to be. Abolish poison. It can be any buff in the game. You can. I know when shamans heal someone, sometimes they give them an armor increase. I don't know if that was just TBC, but you can show it so that buffs on people. You can show any amount of buffs you want. And real quick, just to finish out with bouquets, let's say I have abolish poison and cure disease, but I want one of them to take precedence over the other. I want my cure. I want my cure disease to, well, cure disease doesn't work because it's not a buff. Okay, let's say I have regrowth and abolish poison, and I want one of them to take precedence on each other. So I want abolish poison to appear in the bottom left corner of my frame, but I also want regrowth to appear there. So if I have regrowth and abolish poison on the target at the same time, which one would show up there? Which one would be on top? Well, you can choose that by hitting add here again, and then you could just type in regrowth, and I would change the icon to none again, and there's regrowth. So now Abolish Poison's on top. So if I regrowth myself, there's the regrowth icon. And now if I Abolish Poison myself, Abolish Poison appears on top of regrowth. When Abolish Poison falls off, I'm just going to right click it off for this example. There's the regrowth where it was before. So Abolish Poison's appearing on top. So you can have as many buffs as you want, all loading in the same spot with precedence based on what order they're in, highest priority, lowest priority. If I wanted regrowth to appear above Abolish Poison, I could just change the priority just like that. Now if I Abolish Poison myself, and then I regrowth myself, my regrowth is going to appear on top.
And then if I get rid of the regrowth, there's that abolish poison still there underneath. So there, I don't know a bunch of cases where I've used that in the past. There have been a couple, but it's good to know that you can do that in case you want to layer multiple hots in the same spot and have one or the other take precedence. Um, all right, guys. Well, that about wraps it up. That was a 48-minute video, and that was my second time recording it. So hopefully I didn't leave anything out. I think I covered everything. But if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Um, the, the thing with Voodoo is... All this stuff, I didn't go to college or take a class on how to voodoo, right? Like, you just got to come in here when you're bored and mess around and enjoy the customization and enjoy, like, personalizing your UI. And um, you'll just learn how to do all this stuff. You just got to make mistakes and mess around. The biggest thing I can recommend is going in here to tools, creating a new profile, and anytime you get somewhere that you're really happy with, save what you have. So just hit save here and then make a new profile. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then hit save again. Now I have both these profiles. So now I can experiment. I can do crazy stuff, whatever I want. I could make this panel um, super massive and fuck up my entire UI, right? Hit OK. Oh, no, my UI is ruined. I lost everything. Well, because I made a new profile before I started messing around, I can just go back to the one I was already had saved the way I like it, click Apply, hit yes, and there we go, I got everything back. And I still have this one that I was messing with if I want to continue to mess around. Or I could start from scratch again by making a new profile right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and hitting save. One last thing I'll show you guys, because I just remembered, is if you want to share your profiles with your friends, or your friends want to share their profiles with you, all you have to do is use the export and import buttons here. If I click export, it's going to give me a string. I would literally just copy the string, open up a notepad, paste that string in notepad, save that notepad, and send it over Discord to the boys. And if the same, and they can send me, the, they can do the same thing, send me a string, I can copy that string. Let's say that I just got a string from them. Okay, cool. I can click import. I can paste in that string. It's going to take a second to load because it's an old add-on and it's a lot of text. But there we go. That string's in there. I would hit OK, and then I would hit load, and it would load in that profile that they made. So you can share your profiles with your friends. All right. Alright guys, that about wraps it up, and if you have any questions, please comment, and if you like this kind of content, I'll keep making more and more tutorials for all the add-ons I use, or if you have any specific questions about my UI in particular, um, <laughs> probably not this, that you're not going to want that, but if there's anything else you see on here that you'd like, leave a comment, and if you want to see a video on a, a deep dive on how to mess with these things, I'll go ahead and make more. I'm planning on making a week order tutorial, a shadow to unit frames tutorial, a dominoes tutorial, and a general best practice tutorial for parsing and other sorts of information like that. So again, please like and subscribe if you like the video, guys, and I'll keep pumping out content like this. Appreciate it.